for more on our top stories, let's bring in our political panel. With us today is Brad Howard, a Democratic strategist, and Matt Gorman, a former NRCC communications director and vice president at Targeted Victory. Uh, good to see you both. I have about 85 things to talk to you about, <laughs> so let's just begin um, what's happening in Trump world. And Matt, I do want to begin with you because uh, when you consider all of the investigations going on regarding the former president, you know, the documents at Mar-a-Lago, you have what's happening in Georgia as well. This is an interesting move that is happening um, possibly this week, uh, not to mention that right now with the potential of a misdemeanor, and as Nate Foy was reporting, like a really intricate path to a possible felony. What are your thoughts on the validity of all this? Yeah, look, I, I have not thought highly for a long time about Al Alvin Bragg, who's the Manhattan District Attorney, who uh, is uh, supposedly uh, going forward with, with this indictment, if the reports are true. He was the person who came in on the first day of office and said all these violent crimes we're not going to prosecute, we're going to take the, the penalties down for them. Uh, so I don't put much stock into him as a DA. But look, I've been through presidential campaigns in the past. There's a lot we don't know. We're not sure how this is going to affect it over the next 72 hours, over the next several months. Um, it's the old Mike Tyson quote, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face, essentially. So over the course of 2024, the next 72 hours, there's a lot to be learned. Hmm. Brad? Yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree more. The, the 2024 presidential election is politically lifetimes away <laughs> from today. Right. But, you know, say what you will about this prosecutor, and regardless of how you feel about him, this is a jury, a grand jury that has been presented evidence that if they decide there's enough evidence worthy of allowing a trial to come forward, then that is, that's regardless of the prosecutor. That's a jury of average, everyday working Americans who think there's enough evidence for a crime, and therefore he should go to trial. So let's keep in mind what we're talking about here. A prosecutor can't unilaterally bring um, an indictment against an individual in America. You have to convince a jury of your peers, and then you go to a trial where you have a jury of your peers to decide whether you're guilty or innocent. And in America, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. Okay, well, let's move on uh, now to the banking crisis fallout this week, because the Biden administration, you know, assuring that it will guarantee these depositor depositors, these um, customers at um, Silicon Valley Bank. However, also adding that a special assessment will hit these banks, prompting Missouri Senator Republican Josh Hawley to tweet, quote, what's basically happened with these special assessments to cover SVB is the Biden administration has found a way to make tax Payers pay for a bailout without taking a vote on it. Brad, you first. Well, look, I think the Biden administration's in a tough spot because, in a way, we have to protect these accounts because you've got to prevent a cascading effect of a bank failure, which could, as we saw in 2008, create a massive recession across the country. The Biden administration has acted decisively in proposing tougher penalties for executives who mismanage these types of banks. They've called on Congress to step in and allow the FDIC to get more aggressive in going after bad actors in the system. So I commend the Biden administration for getting tough, and I hope Congress will follow. I think in this particular instance, what you just referenced is the typical Republican conundrum that if you increase fees on corporations that somehow it's going to get passed down to consumers, they can much easily take it out of the money, the massive hundreds of millions of dollars they pay these bank executives. But, but, Brad, what about the regulators, the federal regulators who missed so much? Yeah, no, it's a problem. And we've got to beef up the standards. We've got to beef up the review process. There needs to be more transparency. And the president has called on Congress to act in that regard. Okay. And, and um, Matt, before I give you a chance to respond, I do want, to, want everyone to take a listen to what the Treasury Secretary had to say about SVB's liquidity risk. Take a listen. My understanding is that the bank... Um, to meet liquidity needs, had to sell um, assets that it expected to hold to maturity. And um, given the interest rate increases that have occurred since those assets, including treasuries and government-backed um, security, mortgage-backed securities, they had lost market value. Matt, a technical explanation there of why they can't get their hands on cash or why it's become so difficult and expensive. Um, but your thoughts on this? Yeah, look, I'll break it down in ways I think a lot of folks can understand. So the average person, high school grad, has about $5,000 or so in their bank account. The average bank account at uh, Silicon Valley Bank was in the millions, if not around $5 million, right? So that $220 billion is coming from somewhere. The people with the $5,000 in their account are subsidizing the people with the millions in their account. And going forward, what's even more troublesome is, look, if you have millions of dollars in one account 
Everybody knows FDIC only insures about a quarter million. But if you know that the government and will step in and insure those accounts, there's no risk to keep putting millions of dollars in above the legal FDIC limit. It just incentivizes bad behavior. Yeah, and I'd like to get you both on um, what's happening also with Russia and the fact that um, the Chinese president is planning to head to Moscow, meet with Putin. Brad, you first. And what I want to know from you is what you think the Biden administration should do, if anything, regarding this meeting. Well, look, I mean, it's a sign of the ever deepening and troubling relationship between China and Russia. These are two authoritarian regimes led by two essential dictators that are a threat to U.S. interest uh, abroad uh, and here at home. And so we've got to monitor these situations carefully. I think President Xi is also headed to Ukraine to meet with Zelensky uh, in, the, in the coming weeks. I think that's a positive sign. I want, I hope the president of China will listen to the Ukrainian case uh, and understand that any involvement um, in any strong involvement or direct involvement of weapons or military conflict would be a, would be, seen by the U.S. as a very big threat to the balanced stability of the region and would force further U.S. involvement. And we've got to hold China accountable to these things. Matt, China has a very special way of flexing its muscle here. And this is an interesting meeting, regardless of how they're billing it. Um, the, you know, the Chinese president basically going over there as a quote unquote mediator. And to Brad's point, there will be a meeting from what I understand is on Zoom with Zelensky. But I mean, should the president of the United States be stepping up toward the to the mic at some point and say something about this move? I, I guess. Sure, but you know, what took them so long, right? Like weakness invites aggression. Uh, China and Russia both want to see the U.S. weakened, uh, if not really on its heels. And they've been wanting this for a long time now. It's no secret. I mean, look at the Washington Post, D.C.'s hometown newspaper today, had a large wraparound advertisement from TikTok. Their CEO is coming to Capitol Hill to testify, as we're hoping, I think, a lot of lawmakers to ban TikTok. They're coming in every segment of society, right? They're out aligning with Russia, but here at home, TikTok and spy balloons, they're on the march. And because weakness invites aggression, we need to step up. But if I could respond very quickly to that, I'll say that this is ever more important of why we've got to strengthen NATO. NATO is a counterbalance to a deepening Russia and Chinese relationship. This is President a Biden has done before NATO. Way well, bigger. President Biden has okay. led and well, strengthened NATO from the Trump than NATO. administration. I need which to step in NATO. here because you both started to disagree right as I was running out of time. So I feel like maybe you did that on purpose. Um, Matt Gorman, Brad Howard, thank you so much thank for you, being Alicia. here today. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.